are two naming ionic compounds. Ionic compounds can be made up of a metal and a nonmetal. such as sodium chloride. It can be a metal and a polyatomic ion, such as potassium and sulfate. It can be made up of ammonium and a nonmetal, such as ammonium chloride. Or it can be ammonium and a polyatomic ion, such as ammonium and sulfate. All ionic compounds are positively and negatively charged ions put together. If it's a binary ionic compound, it's made up of two elements. So you write the name of the metal and then shorten the name of the nonmetal with ide at the end, assuming you know the charge of the metal. So it's just potassium chloride. Going to name these compounds. Restart the video when you think you've got it. First, we have magnesium bromide, because magnesium and then Br are bromine turns to bromide. Next, sodium and fluorine change to sodium fluoride. Aluminum and oxygen is aluminum oxide. CDO is cadmium oxide. ZNS is zinc sulfide. Sodium and oxygen is sodium oxide. And K and N is potassium nitride. Again, the three is there because the charge is crossed. And because nitrogen was a negative three and sodium was a plus one, it went together K3N. But it did not affect the name. Most metals can have more than one charge. So when you name them, you have to indicate the charge of the metal if it's not in group 1A, 2A, silver, zinc, cadmium, or aluminum. The charges for those are listed below. All other metals, you have to use your Roman numerals. So if the metal has more than one charge, you name the metal followed by Roman numerals and parentheses to indicate the charge of that metal. Remember the Roman numerals that you need to know are one through five. Then you just name the nonmetal with ide at the end, just like before. So if you have copper with a plus two, then it's going to be copper two. Let's go over writing formulas, and then we'll get to naming them. So just like we did in the previous lesson, iron has a plus three charge. Oxygen is a negative two. So they go together to make Fe2O3. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next three on your own. Tin four chloride. Tin has a plus four charge. Chloride a negative one. So that's SnCl4. Lead 4 oxide, lead has a plus 4, oxygen has a negative 2. So when you cross them, you get Pb2O4. But remember, you have to reduce after you cross, and that reduces down to 1 and 2. So it comes out to PbO2. 10 2 sulfide, 10 has a plus 2 charge in this case. Sulfide is a negative 2. So those reduce down to SNS.
I'm going to pause the video and try these three on your own. Mercury has a two charge and bromide is a negative one. So when they cross, we get HgBr2. Copper has a plus two charge, nitrite a negative three, so Cu3N2. Iron is a plus two, iodine a negative one, so Fei2. If you're going from formula to name, you have to look at the charge of the nonmetal to determine the charge of the metal. Remember the overall nonmetal charge has to equal the overall charge of the metal. So copper is not in group 1A, 2A, silver, zinc, cadmium, or aluminum, so we're going to need Roman numerals. Chlorine has a negative one charge and we have three of them, so that's an overall negative three charge. So copper has to have a three charge to cancel out that negative three. We only have one copper, so that one copper must have a charge of three. So the name of that one would be copper three chloride. We don't know the charge of iron, but we do know the charge of oxygen. Oxygen's a negative two, but we have three of them, so that's a negative six. Which means iron must be a positive six, so it cancels out to zero. We have two irons, so six divided by two means each iron must be a positive three charge. Notice you can also cross the charges back up, but that only works if it's not been reduced. So before you can name these, you need to figure out the charges of each of the metals. And then you can figure out the names. Pause the video and try the first ones on your own, restarting when you think you have it. You don't know the charge of iron, but you do know chlorine. It's a negative one and you have two, so that's a negative two, which means iron must be a plus two. So we get iron two chloride. You don't know the charge of tin, but you know the charge of oxygen is negative two. We have one oxygen, so tin must be a plus two to cancel it out. So that's tin two oxide. You don't know the charge of copper, but you do know the charge of sulfur is negative two. Again, copper must be plus two to cancel it out. So you get copper two sulfide. You don't know the charge of iron, but oxygen's a negative two. Times three is a negative six, so iron must be a plus six. You have two iron, so each iron is a plus three, giving you iron three oxide. You don't know cobalt's charge, but phosphate has a negative three charge. You have two phosphates, giving you a negative six, so cobalt must be a plus six. Divided by three, each cobalt is a plus two. So you get cobalt two phosphate. Notice we are not changing the ending of a polyatomic ion. Pause the video and try these five on your own. Mercury is not in group 1A, 2A, silver, zinc, cadmium, or aluminum, so we don't know its charge. Iodine is a negative one though, and we have two of them, so that's negative two. Mercury then must be a plus two, divided by two, each mercury is a plus one. So we get mercury one iodide. Mercury is special in that mercury one can't be by itself. That's why mercury wasn't reduced down to HGI. We don't know copper's charge, but iodine's a negative one, so copper must be a one. So copper one iodide. Oxygen's a negative two. We have two, so that's a negative four. 
so lead must be a plus four, giving you lead four oxide. Be careful on nine because you have one sulfate with a negative two charge, which means manganese must be a plus two to cancel it out. So you get manganese 2 sulfate. You do know the charge of silver, it's a plus 1. Because it's in group 1A, 2A, silver, zinc, cadmium, or aluminum, you do not need Roman numerals. You just put silver nitrate. If you put the 1, it will be counted wrong. So only use Roman numerals if you do not know the charge of the metal.